Uh, recognize that your mental health is so important If you don't, then I promise you'll be so distorted Stiffened by your thoughts, that's a mental rigor mortis I'm on a hard mission and it won't be aborted Assorted memories will seem to be your remedy But in your darkest hour, form into your enemies Trust your gut, judge people off the energy Cut them off quick and fast, they are limiting Your room to grow I- You're listening to the Expect Effect podcast, where the concept of self-care is our primary focus. Consider this an acknowledgement of feeling, the birth of every great idea within you. This this is a judgment-free zone. And we know life is hard, but we believe self-care doesn't have to be. So sit back, relax, and unwind as together we uncover ways to truly expect better, do better, and believe better. I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling stuck. I'm feeling trapped in the house. I'm feeling tired of being in the house. I know y'all are sick of it. I'm also sick of having discussions about it, which is also why I'm trying not to dive too heavily into it, but it's really an unavoidable topic in present times, guys. I don't know what's popping, and I don't know when we gonna be free or up off house arrest, but you know what I'm saying, free my people till I see my people. So I'm gonna see y'all soon. We're gonna be out here, we're gonna be moving around, and we're gonna be having some great times eventually. This week, we got two episodes coming all the way at you until May 3rd. So on that particular Sunday, we'll do our last little two weekly episode drop but i want to give you guys as much content as possible i've had the amazing opportunity to connect with some really great individuals so i want to just i want to make sure we add it i want to make sure we about it you know i want to make sure i'm really giving you everything um that i can possibly give you in this moment in time considering everything that's happening creatives be inspired get out do something move around you know this is a really great time all right y'all you already know um for new listeners Thank you so much um, for tuning in to continued listeners. This is the moment. Take a seat. Let's step, let's sit down in my living room. Let's talk about it. If no one else is asked, I'm asking, how are you? How are you feeling? Like what, like what's really popping considering the current climate? Are you in between jobs at the moment? Are you unsure of your future at the moment? Are you scared for family at the moment? Like what, what's happening in your world? You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at the expect effect podcast and shoot us a dm with information as it pertains to things going on in your life you can also email us directly from our social media pages again that's at the expect effect podcast on instagram and facebook as for me and myself listen over the past week i think it was really just a rocky adjustment i think a lot of this year not only for myself but for people i know has been a lot of start stop start stop start stop right we're we're getting started we're feeling good and then something happens for some people it's it's been the same shit it was since 2018 not even 2019 you 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 dig what i'm saying like it's it's really something out here that is constantly pulling a kind of a tug of war but you know i regained my composure i got back out there and i decided that no matter what there's going to be a high production of really really great content there's going to be um a high production of my energy right if i believe in something anything be it my relationship friendships connections uh, the the show writings that i do any projects i work on i just told myself i was gonna go in 110 um, percent because if there's one thing i've gained it's life is just a little too short to not do as you will later hear in this episode uh, explained further all you can while you can Life is a little too short to not do all you can while you can. So I think it's just really time to apply myself. And I, I've said it before, but you're you're not always going to want to do something. So you have to be disciplined, right? You're not always going to be in the mood. It's not always going to be the right time. There are going to be schedule sacrifices that have to be made, things that have to be moved around. Um, and I am still working to gain, like just to a set consistent schedule something that says we're absolutely going to do these things at this time to make sure um, that i have the kind of free time i want the flexibility that i want and also the room as much as you can possibly create um, to deal with unexpected life events and to not have them throw so many things off course i've just been working really this week on on regrouping um remaining grounded trying to 
remain thankful, getting reconnected spiritually. Um, I usually go to like a group, like a virtual online group with members of my church, like every Monday. And I tapped out on that this week. Like it was just kind of, it was just kind of one of those things of really trying to work and, and gather and find balance and, and also recognizing when your self-care routine may need to evolve. Like recognize when it might need to shift for you when things might be a little different when it's not necessarily um, working anymore. You know, some areas of my self-care routine were still very effective, but it, it is okay to level up your self-care routine. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It's not an obligation. You know, it's not something that you need to force yourself to do or bend yourself to be doing. If you find that something isn't serving you, don't be scared to evolve and change that thing. I know sometimes my the way my anxiety works, I start to panic like can I shift this thing? Uh, you know, can I change this? If I do change this, this seems to have been bringing me balance for a very long time, but something about my soul is just uneasy. And often we start to really hone in and go harder on the rhythm we already have in place, right? We just start to play that beat a little louder instead of looking at potentially just changing the track altogether and finding if there's a different sound that fits is there a different instrument that needs to go with your track do you need to build up something else to, sh to ensure that your life playlist is really giving you everything you need in any given situation and moment right there are definitely going to be things that catch us off guard and that we can't prepare for and that we can't be ready for things we don't expect and things we don't know about but <clears throat> excuse me for what we do know about for what we can engage and for what we can modify it's it's worth the exploration um so this week i encourage all of you just give it all you got anywhere you got it do what you need to do for yourself recognize areas in which change may need to occur have conversations that may seem difficult to have with yourself and just really really balance like on, on the last episode, we talked about how important it was to interview yourself. We posted journal questions on our show's blog page. If you're unsure of where to find that, follow at the Expect Effect podcast on Instagram and Facebook. You will find a link there taking you to our blog page. That same link will take you anywhere you prefer to listen to the show, whether that's Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We have our YouTube channel there and also, again, direct access to that blog page. So just go ahead, plug in, tune in with us on social media. Google, you know, questions that may be good to ask yourself and just really ruminate, you know, just sit, just, just really be in that space, start to impact those things and make sure that you are all the way together. Um, because once I just took time to make sure that I was gathered and I had, you know, valid avenues and outlets and I started to kind of shift and change and move some things around because when the circumstances change, baby, sometimes so do you. Okay, we can't do everything we used to do with Rona running around. Nobody's going to bars. Nobody's partying. Okay, we're not. We're not. We're just. We're just not. I'm not going to restaurants. You know what sounds good? Food somebody else cooked. Okay, and not and not having to think about anything else that comes with that. Uh, you know, it's it's just good. we miss being outside. We really, really do. But find a way to gather, restructure, and adjust everything that's going on and find a way to be grateful, to be balanced, and to be thankful. Um, you know, just, I know I sound like a broken record, but really it's just you got to find a way to really hone and bring it all in. And just you, if you are good, if you're centered, if you're balanced, if you feel good about you and what you're doing, regardless of what everything else is looking like, like around you there's going to be in my opinion this just overwhelming sense of peace so this week's topic um just so you're aware i'm going to give y'all a little context okay to anyone who doesn't know your childhood sucked if you don't know but the little engine that could i'm going to read a quick excerpt for you guys and then we're going to dive into the meat of this scripture okay so if you would turn to me in your bibles to the little engine that could uh, we're going to the near, the near the end, basically on the page before the last page, then the last page, or maybe last couple of pages. It doesn't matter which version you have. If you're wanting to read along, please join us on Google. The little blue engine pulled up close and she took a hold of the train. She, by the way, is a girl. They're trying to get some toys up to these kids and get over the mountain. Okay, they're trying to get over the mountain to get toys and food to some children. And all the big boy trains, they're already gone. They've left Thomas. 
who by the way is the little engine that could and they've left him behind and Thomas is kind of weak you know he ain't been getting his gains didn't eat his Popeye spinach and he was unsure of what it would look like for him to attempt to go over the mountain so the little engine pulled up close and the girl took hold of the little train. The toys and dolls climbed back to their cars. At last, the little blue engine said, I think I can climb up the mountain. I think I can, I think I can. Then the little blue engine began to pull. She tugged and pulled. She pulled and she tugged. Puff, puff, chug, chug went the little engine. I think I can, I think I can. Slowly, the train started to move. The dolls and toys began to smile and clap. Puff, puff, chug, chug, up the mountain went the little blue engine. And all the time she kept saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Up, 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 the little engine climbed and climbed. At last she reached the top of the mountain, down below lay the city. Hooray, hooray, cried the dolls and animals. The boys and girls will be so happy, said the toy clown. All because you helped us, little blue engine. And the little blue engine just smiled. As she puffed down the mountain, the little blue engine seemed to say, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. What I want to take away from the little engine that could, well, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. This week we're talking at overcoming self-doubt. And a lot of times what y'all don't want to address is that when we're overcoming self-doubt, when we're overcoming, you know, all of the anxiety and worry that we place on ourselves, that really involves going through the process. I once heard a quote and I remember the year I heard it. It was 2016. This was a wild year for the kids. So I really can't forget a lot that happened that particular year, but I specifically remember a quote that said everything and I heard it on a TED Talk podcast, right? So it said everything I want is on the other side of fear if I would just be willing to go get it. And a lot of self-doubt stems from fear. It stems from making excuses and it stems from a lack of self-awareness, a lack of self-compassion and and a need for validation. So I just want to run that back because per the usual, a girl was stuttering, but it involves being caught up in making excuses, a lack of self-awareness, a lack of self-compassion and a need for validation. So these are the four primary things I've found are often rooted in self-doubt. And so when you talk overcoming self-doubt and wanting to come out of the shell that you're in i think the little engine that could gives us the most insight in the most simplistic terms and one way to really really engage and hone in and develop and get over anxiety is almost to become childlike you just have to really open your mind to different possibilities and different avenues and the little engine that could is just a great children's book that i felt and you know kind of unraveled this in a really great way so when we talk about being caught up in making excuses one you simply have to stop i know it's it's a lot for me to say it's like going from being a cigarette smoker to not being a cigarette smoker cold turkey overnight maybe that's what you feel like i'm proposing but dead ass stop making excuses right so when you're making excuses and and to to specifically pull from a scene in the book originally like i said that little engine was like i can't get up here i can't do what they did i've seen these pe- these other trains they're bigger than me they're longer than me they got better paint jobs than me they got better wheels than i have i bet the cabin areas well i bet they had inside cabins on the trains that that little engine was looking at to looking up to you know and then specifically they called it a little blue engine you know so there was this little blue engine i'm just a blue engine you know i'm just a little blue engine i can't make it up this hill i can't do what the people before me have done and in any situation self-doubt often makes us rationalize our emotional state so we're afraid to fail or look bad we're afraid to be shown up we're afraid to be insufficient or inadequate we're afraid to move forward And the only enemy in these situations is often us. We're giving 
I mean, like if you give a slight nanosecond to a negative thought, it will start producing excuses, transparent self-justifications, and a million reasons why we shouldn't or won't do what we know we need to do. In the instance with the little engine that could, this little blue engine, there were children who needed food and toys. If you take the toys out of it and just the food, child, they needed to eat. And at first, just because being so caught up in irrationality and self-doubt, the little blue engine said, I'm not going to make it, y'all. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't care about them kids. Fuck them kids. I done told y'all I can't get up this mountain. And that sounds pretty stupid when you think about it, doesn't it? When you, when you say it out loud or do something like that, when you know that you're cap- you've never even attempted something, but you're saying that you can't do it. This little blue engine had never even tried to go up that hill. But by way of self-doubt had created so many excuses and so many channels and so many avenues of I can't. I just ain't got it. Y'all love to say I can't. We, myself included, love to say I can't. And in reality, it should be I can. Or at least I will try. Some of y'all so scared to try. You just, you just over here, you just, you just, I'm so scared to try. Some of you have preconceived notions about singing, writing that book, going on that first date, making that first move, working on yourself to the point of addressing certain things within you that are hindering maybe, say, the relationship you're in. You're constantly finding avenues and ways to make excuses without really diving into that thing. So when you work to overcome resistance and get out of your own way, then you have an opportunity to really move and dive into some things that are just incredible. It's how you get started. And all you have to do is get started. That's all we're at. Like, that's, that's all I'm saying It's just try. At least get out there, overcome everything in your own mind that has set up principles and things that don't even make sense. The little blue engine was designed to be a locomotive. Therefore, it was designed to handle traction on train tracks. It was built for the very thing it was speaking against. It was built for the very thing it was saying it couldn't do. And sometimes you forget you were designed for the very thing you're saying you cannot do. You're scared to write a book, but you be freestyling poems and raps and and everything else. And you've heard people read some of your work sometimes. And everybody's like, you should put a book out. And you're like, I really want to put a book out. For some reason, you can't understand why your story keeps pulling on you, why you feel it needs to be told. But you're not telling it because you're scared. Because you've told yourself this simply isn't what I was made to do. Everybody who's written books before me was smarter than me, more talented than me. They graduated high school. I dropped out in the 10th grade with a GED. I've only gone to community college. I don't qualify for this. I've been divorced three times. Why would anybody want to date me? I'm not likable enough. I'm not lovable enough. I don't belong in this space, even though my resume says I belong in this space, even though my job experience says I belong in this space, even though every aspect of my life has led me up until this point, I'm going to make excuses because I don't believe I'm in this space. Do you see how silly that sounds? All you have to do is try. Everything you want is on the other side of a fear. So stop stop making excuses and stop living in a space of self-doubt. This ties into a lack of self-awareness and a lack of self-compassion. When you are not in tune with yourself and you don't know what it is you desire, you want, or, or what you, you haven't even given yourself the opportunity to dream of reaching something more than what you see right now in this moment, you'll often find self-doubt really, really has the opportunity to creep in. Because when you don't know you're the shit, anybody could tell you that you're not. Any one little thing could come in and just rip you apart because you don't know you're the one. You don't know you're the perfect fit. You don't know that the key you have, the key you're looking for, excuse me, you don't know that the key you're looking for is the key you have. You are the key. Khaled ain't ain't dropping keys. He ain't giving us keys. He ain't got no keys. You are the key. And you're the answer, right? Right? And be compassionate with yourself. It's okay to learn. It's okay to not know what's going on in these moments. It's okay to draw out slowly. It's okay to not be sure. It's okay to start again, stop again, do all of these things. I think sometimes we get so amped up, we get so worked up and we get going. 
that were like, oh, you know, like you're, you're not gentle with yourselves in, in the aura of mistakes. We're aggressive with ourselves when we mess up. And even me, like we have weird ways of like punishing ourselves. I was watching this documentary of a guy who was a very popular wrestler, um, which I'm very into like true crime as many of us are. And many of us probably don't have anything else to watch right now during this time. We've gone through so many things, but I'm into a lot of true crime. And like um, there's this show on Vice called Wrestling Gone Bad. So I was watching the story of Chris Benoit, who was a wrestler and he made a mistake in the ring one time and he literally went backstage and did like a hundred squats um, even though nobody noticed he made the mistake, it was him, him noticing himself and saying like, ah, I absolutely cannot do this thing. And this isn't me speaking down on discipline. We have a whole episode on discipline. Trust me, this isn't me speaking down on that. Um, but this is to say, damn, Gina, like be gentle with yourself. Um, even when I think about how anxiety and, and panic works, um, Part of the reason I wanted to do two shows a week is because I didn't have a guest last week, which is kind of ridiculous when I say it out loud because it's, it's my show. We might not have a guest every week, you know, and things happen, but it's just kind of like, oh, damn, I don't want that to happen again. And we let so many things creep in and concave our mental that it's like, really, really like just be just be kind to you. That's the whole concept and principle and practice of self-care is to just be kind to you and also self-care encompasses self-awareness when you really sit down and you learn yourself and you interview yourself and you engage in relationships and you have a tight community and a tight inner circle and even if that's one person and, and that one person is you in the mirror say this is my team and I'm rolling with it when you really start to unravel and uncover everything about yourself and and get comfortable with dating yourself and learning yourself then you really do it, it becomes easier to start to be more compassionate towards yourself i think because you start to view yourself with that same love and that same energy you're so constantly and so readily giving other people never give anyone a break you wouldn't give yourself do you hear me like never slide any kind of kindness or compassion that you wouldn't give to yourself and I know when I said that, a lot of us are like, oh, shit. Like, well, if that's the case, I might have to start being mean to a lot of motherfuckers. No, what you need to do is start being nice to yourself. So let's run that back. Don't give out anything that you're not willing to give yourself. Love on yourself just as hard as you love on other people and give to yourself just as hard as you give to other people. And my last point, stop asking those other people for validation. Because when you're dealing with you, when you're working with you, you're not issued in, you're not interested in the issue of comparison. You're not worried about any of that. None of that even matters to you. Because you've raised your self-awareness, you're being more compassionate with yourself. And you did this by starting the process. When you stop making excuses, you started the process and you said, okay, I'm gonna take this walk. I don't know what this looks like, but I'm gonna get out here. I'm gonna learn what I need to learn. I'm gonna know what I need to know. I'm gonna do what I need to do. And I'm going to get in tune with myself to make sure I can keep doing it. I'm going to become more self-aware, more self-compassionate, and I'm going to stop asking for validation. Because seeking validation from the people around you, I cannot stress this enough. You go on Instagram, you go on Facebook, you go on Twitter, and what do you see? Still moments, captured images, captured images perfectly crafted characters. You're not seeing anything happening in real time, baby. And even things we see on live, that's manufactured, that's generated, that's sometimes not real. And that's just it. If nobody knows your story or knows what you've been through or can imagine your struggle or can imagine your pain, what makes you think you could capture someone else's through an Instagram post or through a Facebook message? Or like, like, like what do you really think you can gain from monitoring other people's social media habits or looking at what other people are doing if there's shit you don't want people to know i promise you there's there are things they don't want you to know and other people can't hype you up other people aren't going to live the dream for you other people aren't going to die with you other people aren't putting in the work other people ain't cried for this other people ain't lost sleep for this other people haven't slept outside for this other people have not been where you have been you get what i'm saying like no matter what your struggle is nobody but you nobody but you from day one nobody but you there are things you know and things you remember nobody else does because you were the only person who could experience it and because of that you need to be open and welcome to the idea that the only validation you need is with you baby that's it that's it you're the only person you need to check in with 
You don't need to check in with nobody else. Not your mama, not your daddy. They're their own people. They have their own lives to live. They're, they're, they are all kinds of messed up. The people in your inner circle, when you have that tight crew, as we've previously discussed, when you have people that create, that reciprocate, that support you emotionally, that provide the appropriate energy and that put in that work with you. When you have that in place, then it's those people that are able to guide you and be back to back with you, right? They're not necessarily going to validate you. They may provide some reassurance, um, but they're going to be back to back with you. They're going to be calling you out when you're making mistakes that maybe you're not noticing in the process of building you up and working on self. They're going to be the ones that have conversations with you that work it out, that take you to pray, that encourage you to go to therapy, um, that push you to to do whatever it takes to become the best ver version of yourself. But again, they're not going to be and they cannot be the people you look to for the final say. If you do anything at all, because somebody else told you to, like, I mean, when you really think about it in, in the context of any decision you make for you, if you do anything for you, because somebody else told you to really think about having to deal with the consequences of that, of that, and, and, and really think about having to deal with the consequences of seeking external validation and constantly needing a like or a double tap or something like to make you feel superior. When in reality, I promise you, we are all in the same boat in some way or another. We are all in the same boat, all in need of self-care, all in need of self-compassion, uh, all in need in some way to stop making excuses in some area of our lives. And we're all going to be seeking validation in different ways. But the idea is to actively work and fight against that thing to make sure that really the only input you're seeking at the end of the day is your own. Um, so thank you so much. That's been part one. Uh, we're stepping into full effect with Jasmine Clark right after this. I'm going to really, really just preface and say you're going to pick up just so much good energy from this. She's so fun and she's such a positive ray of light and, and energy and and uh, just just exceed like she exudes confidence and exceeded my expectations as far as anything I could have imagined. You know, just being in the middle of a quarantine and, and talking to someone I've never talked to before, you always kind of wonder how that vibe and that energy is going to go. And I felt like I was talking to somebody I've known forever and a day. Um, so please sit tight. I promise you don't want to go anywhere. I know we're 30 minutes in. We got like another 30 minutes to go, but this is going to be a beautiful hour. So sit, sit tight. Lord Jesus, uh, right now we're going to have a prayer moment because I really need to get this in order. I sound like one of the cheetah girls. You know which one I'm talking about. Um, but <laughs> sit tight, relax, don't go anywhere. We're coming back right after this and stepping into full effect with Jasmine Clark. Hey, hey there. Um, my name is Jasmine Clark. Um, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, born and raised. Um, I'm current. I currently have a blog. It's hey, Miss Clark. It's a lifestyle blog where I talk about natural hair, um, lifestyle things, travel, um, beauty, all that good stuff. Um, I've been blogging. I will say pretty much about two and a half years, maybe. Um, and I'm still getting into the flow of everything, but I absolutely love it. It's free. It's fun. Um, I'm able to talk about the things that I love. Um, and I would just want to thank Nikia for reaching out to me to come on to the podcast as another, I guess, Hey Miss Clark lifestyle um experiment and experience. So um what else about me? It's hard to talk about yourself. It is, but that's <laughs> um, why I like to let y'all do it when you come on in the <laughs> intro. Yes, it's hard. So I'm 28 years old. Um, I do work a nine to five. I am the head teller at a local credit union here in Birmingham. I've been doing that for four years. So I've been juggling a little bit between full time uh, blogging. Um, and I also have another business, a professional organization business that I do. So I'm like all over the place. I'm just uh, tapping into my gifts and putting them out in the universe, making things happen and just enjoying life. So that's me. Man, I love it. And there were so many takeaways that just to get started with people, 
Um, before we dive into this week's topic, which a fresh reminder for all of those who, of you who have been listening, the little engine that could, we're talking about progressing in the face of adversity, moving forward when you don't think you can, and overcoming self-doubt and everything that comes with that. Stop, I think, and start, I know. Um, when you talk about being a blogger for the past two years, you've got a nine to five. I love your personality and your energy. You talk about tapping into your gifts. You've got another independent business, and you're like, hey, I'm all over the place. And when you said that, I felt that on so many levels because I feel the same way. And so I want you to talk a little bit about how you have managed to navigate the scene of like balancing all of these things, especially when we talk about professional organizations. So are you like, you're like coming into people's homes and like organizing their closets and, and living spaces and office spaces. Is this correct? That's correct. Um, I love doing closets. I've tapped into a little doing kitchens. Um, I haven't done an office yet. I would love to one day, but they it's mostly closets. Um, and I really just I already I always had an organized bone, and it's just from being raised by my grandma. Shout out to the grandmas. You clean, you put things away as soon as you get done with them. Never leave your room looking a mess. Man, so listen, been... they used to come get me from school if my bed wasn't made. Do you hear me? Like. <laughs> Um, yes. Wow. <laughs> so she didn't play about that. So I've always just kept my things neat, organized, tidy. So I really didn't have to clean as much as, you know, other people may have. So, and I actually thought about this while at my full-time job. And I'm like, you know, I don't know what else. Is, I, I knew I wanted to have a business, but I'm like, I don't do hair. I don't do makeup. I'm not a stylist. So I had to tap into what I know how uh, to do best. And then also while doing research and I was, when I was researching, I said professional organizers, you know, I'm like, I'm good at that. You know, not your, the traditional job, not the traditional business that people would think, but that's a talent and that's a gift that I basically just bid on myself on. And this all started last year and I've had, a great amount of clients and I'm just so happy that I, I just took that leap of faith and just did it but about balancing it's 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 difficult because I only have weekends off so with um blogging and the organization business I have to do to do work basically work on weekends because it's my free time and I kind of like having my Sundays reserved a little bit so I kind of do like to do everything on Saturdays, um, but y'all, it's really, it, it is a struggle because when the weekend come after a long week of work, you just really want to relax. But you Man, you want to tap out quick. <laughs> do you hear me? I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so ready sometimes to just throw it in and you feel like the nine to five Sometimes for me, my nine to five feels like it's in my way. Like I'm doing it and you're paying me. I understand. But when you talk about being a solo production, which, you know, you're the only person that's working your blog, you have an organization business, there's, you're still required to be an employee. And there's like, there's just all this pressure. So I agree. Keeping your Sundays open is kind of how I've, I've managed to keep my sanity, I think. Yes, I definitely. Because it's just like that reset on a Sunday to get ready for the work week. And I battled with myself with wanting to become a full-time entrepreneur or not. But let me be the first one to say, be honest, I don't think this, that won't be me. <laughs> so going forward. Hey girl, I'm not tapping out either. To... I'm talking mess, <laughs> but I'm clocking in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, let's hit that clock from nine to five. But the you, the balancing is still really a struggle for me. And I think I have gotten a lot better because my focus, I'm learning how to just focus a little bit more. So stay tuned with the, the balancing. I'm still trying to figure everything out. And I'm learning um, just to just organize. Okay, I'm going to work on blogging this day. I'm going to open up dates for organization. So I don't put, I don't put too much on myself that I know I would just, just beat myself down and out about so it's definitely has a lot to do with scheduling and opening up you know what you can do stick to that and don't beat yourself up and I had to tell myself that you cannot just beat yourself up and then 
you become unproductive when you do that. So definitely just open up your schedule to your nine to fives and then your other side businesses will definitely balance out and just level everything out. I love the point you made about not beating yourself up and doing what you know you can do. I think what a lot of people fail to do in many instances is really assess what they can and cannot handle. And we're all guilty of that for sure. Mm -hmm. But proper assessment of what you're really going to be capable of, what your options really are. Like, does it sound feasible? Not just does it sound cool? Not would you really love to do it? Not is this a once in a lifetime opportunity? Where does it fit in with everything else? Do you truly have room for it? And is it truly of necessity? Um, And when you talk about tapping into your gifts, I love the verbiage that you're using here. Um, and just getting into what you naturally do well, what allowed you, in addition to research, which you mentioned earlier, to really focus in and to hone in and say, like, this is what I'm good at? Because no, you're right. Like, I wouldn't think about starting an organization, an organizational based business. But girl, like when you said it, I was like, well, I, I need somebody to do that. Like it was immediately like, oh, that's that's a pretty prominent need. So when you talk about tapping into your natural gifts, what are some of the things you went through to get to this place? Um, I actually wrote down the things that I love and the things that I enjoy doing. One day at work, it was just it was a boring day at work. And I'm like, you know, I have to find some. I know I'm talented at something. So writing those things down, I know I love natural hair. I know I love skincare. I know I can do this. I know I can do that. What and and knowing yourself and knowing what makes you really happy, things that don't you're not doing it for the money, you will do it for free. And I I thought that was cliche, but listen, once you figure out yourself and once you experience things and you really find out and be so in tune with yourself, that's when I think your gifts will just come out. And it's the most unordinary you know, unexplainable thing, and many people may not understand, but writing those things down that you enjoy from, I mean, just walking the parks or something, if you like uh, reviewing things, like if that brings you comfort and you love that, that's when you know you are very in tune with yourself and know that somehow in some place or at some time those gifts can become a side hustle. So just writing those things down, what I know, what I can do, what I love and what I like and enjoy, that's what um, allowed me to just bet on myself and to just go after those things in addition to the research. That's something powerful. I mean, just you really saying that to just write down what you know you enjoy and what you're good at. Work to categorize those things and then you'll find your fit. But also in that, that takes an adequate assessment of self, which listeners, we've been preaching from day one. I love me like Kanye loves Kanye. There has to be enough self-love. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Are you still there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I was saying okay. hello, okay. like, yes, girl. <laughs> right. Oh, girl, I was like, oh, did we lose connection? But no, hey, amen, no. I feel you, because that really does have different meanings. But yeah, no, really, though, it has to do with a sense of, like, balance. So if I don't know me, if I'm not comfortable with me, if I haven't taken the time to learn myself, there can be no, and I mean absolutely zero expectation that you can expect to master any craft because you are not sitting down to know who you are. So anything that you're applying yourself to is never really going to get the full experience because you're not producing and feeding into it. So I really love what you said there, but just about taking time to write down what you enjoy. I think plenty of people, especially in the middle of this quarantine, are like, if you see creatives, I know as a creative, it stresses me out when I just see people doing more than what I'm doing, even though I know I've got a nine to five. And you know, like you see yourself kind of trying to gauge and, and move in and also be with the wave of what's happening. Happening, but instead of like pushing and forcing yourself and trying to keep up with the Joneses, like just sit down and get to know you and produce your best work. Um, so leading off of that statement, when you talked about writing down some things you enjoy and really understanding yourself, what have been the biggest things you have learned in this journey? And do you find you are continuing to learn as you navigate who you are and what your passions are? Great question. Um. Doing that just 
it definitely let me know that I'm okay with who I am because we do we do a lot to fit in with other people. Well, so and so doing this. Oh, let me just try that out just to have something going on. If I know um that I don't like this type of thing, I shouldn't be so afraid to say, Oh, well, I don't like that or they're just not who I am as a person. Afraid. So, I feel yes. Mm. I heard choirs when you said that word, like <laughs> afraid. Ugh. <laughs> Yes, because I've always just been that person. Like, I'll see other people doing something. And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe that's that's interesting. Maybe I should do that. But no, girl. Like, if you just love, for an example, let me just say, like, I don't like, I'm like, I think of myself as a truly natural. Natural, I don't wear nails. I don't wear, you know, the up jewelry. I dress cute, casual. You are so beautiful, though. Like, you guys, when y'all, I had to stop you, girl. Like, when I saw her page and her whole energy and her whole vibe, she is, don't let her come in here and play you talking about, I'm all natural, you know. I just, (laughs) I do a couple things here. This girl is gorgeous, y'all. She was really finna play, y'all. I couldn't let her do it. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. But I am just fully comfortable with myself and knowing that, yes, I am beautiful. In my own way, like I'm silly. Um, I like YouTube blogs. I like I like just all the unordinary things that that most people may not see about myself. Um, and once again, just going back to just being in tune with yourself, you just have to really just love yourself for who you are, no matter if you like painting, if you like drawing, just whatever you love to do and enjoy that, that makes, that really makes you, you, and nobody can tell you any different. I hope to answer the question. If not, I can keep going. Girl, no, it answers the question, but you are free to keep going. One thing I think (laughs) you really pointed out that I love in, in terms of comparison, when we talk about fear, I think one side of fear also leads into the comparison of of, of, like almost where you're incapable of, of progressing because you're paying so much attention, not only to what's happening around you, but to the voices in your head that may say you're not doing so well. You're seeking validation from social media. You're seeking Mm -hmm. validation from people that are doing what you think you may want to do, but you're never really sitting down with you. And so when we talk about really making that progression from, I think I can, I think I can too. I know I can. What are things that you find if anything you affirm every single day that that like jerks you out of the mindset of I can't do this or maybe I shouldn't try that or when you talk about avoiding fear and really leveling with yourself what prevents you from going back to that space just in day-to-day thought like how do you pull yourself out of a negative moment great question um how do I pull myself out of a negative moment I honestly just do it if because before I even put out anything and this uh blog blog post pictures or anything i'm trust me i'm truly comfortable with myself i have looked over this i have planned this out i don't ask anybody hey what you think of this there's nothing wrong with getting feedback from everybody but if you truly enjoy and you truly feel comfortable with it you really don't shouldn't have to seek validation or you shouldn't have to ask anyone for um oh is it is this okay to post or is this does this sound right? Because you have had that conversation with yourself first. Um and you are comfortable and you know from your from yourself, you know that this is it. Um I also just think about it. I don't try to rush anything. That's one thing about me. I have stopped my rushing process because I know what work I put in. I know what I like to do. I know how I want it. And I love just the beauty in taking things slow and, and being in the moment now. At first, I was like, oh, I need this. I need that. I need. I want this. I want that at a certain time. Oh, I wish I had this. But I really just understand the beauty of 
let me just take it slow and easy because I know in the future these what I'm doing now is going to come at the right time and I want to appreciate that time when it comes um and I also just I have different apps that I have that um brings me back the pattern app is is a very good app I must say um and I just really just motivate myself, like, girl, you're doing good. You know what pace you want to stay on. Don't let anyone rush you. Um, it's okay to listen to friends whenever, you know, when they need be. But I I feel like I'm just so comfortable with my decisions and with myself first above anybody else. So I know how to make the right decision on everything or whenever I decide to just put something out there, I try to keep myself motivated, which is with different apps, and to know that whatever will happen and whatever it is for me is going to be for me and it's going to come at the right time. That I love. There was there was so much that I could really take down and break down for the next 45 minutes, but I ain't even going to do y'all like that. I'm just going <laughs> to break it down a few <laughs> slight seconds. But I love how you said, I know I like the work I like to do. I know how I want it. And I know that I want to take things slow because there's beauty in the moment. And that's a wild concept to think that procrastination, when you procrastinate, can can be really an attack on self. It's, 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 it's as if saying you don't like yourself enough. And there was so much power in what you said and saying, I want to have an appreciation of what I've worked for when I get there. So if I can take my time and I can put emphasis on this moment and I cannot rush and I'm not procrastinating, there's a deep appreciation and I think a confidence, an added confidence when you put out something and you've put it out in a feasible amount of time. There's rushing for me, like even though in a lot of instances I am a natural procrastinator, I find when it comes to my crafts, it brings me an unbelievable amount of stress, unlike doing homework late or something like that, to put out a product that I feel like it could have been just a little better. Like I really didn't apply myself. The only fixes um, I'm okay with needing to be made are the ones I couldn't make myself, right? They were just things that happened that were unavoidable. So what you said about just taking that in, that is so, so powerful. I think there's an immense important importance in being still. So that's amazing. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. If there's one thing you could tell anybody when it comes down to the pursuit of their passions, moving away from self-doubt and really just pushing forward, no matter their age or gender, what would that be? Um, girl, I've seen a quote uh, from a young lady here. And y'all, it, it sits it gave me a very new perspective. She said her dad told her this, do all you can while you can. And for some reason, that moved me. Not just rush to do anything or just um, just tap into anything. But if, if, if it's something that you know you really want to become interested in, I don't care if it's yoga for the first time, or is it if you want to just take a jab at just anything that your heart desires, do that while you can, but also don't rush the process. Um, Cause let me quick. But when I first started my job right after college, I was like, Oh, you know, I'm gonna be out here in a year. Da, 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 da. No, um, I don't, this job isn't for me when I really didn't know that this was just a life lesson for me. So don't always look at other people and see that, you know, their journey is maybe going faster or um, you think their journey is going faster. You just never know what they have gone through. And I had to really tell myself that we don't know what these people have been going through or what setbacks they have had. Many in plenty of my YouTuber faves that I watch and blogger faves took them 10 years for something to actually just happen um so don't ever just rush life just take a day by a day moment by a moment do everything with love do smile a lot um just tap into your interest and don't just just don't rush it and again just do all you can while you can but also just appreciate the moment and appreciate um 
just every season that you may have. And please just don't get discouraged because trust and believe you appreciate that time when your time is here and when your time comes, you're going to appreciate it a lot better. And just stop comparing yourself. Girl, do what you do. Feel confident in it. Know that one person is watching and one person will love what you're doing and what you're putting out there. Um, and just just enjoy just enjoy the process, enjoy life, and get keep it going. This year, keep it going. I know we have this uh, coronavirus stuff going on, but just tap into your um interest, tap into everything that you love to do, and let no one tell you that it's crazy. Man, because it's only crazy until it happens. No, you said yes. just, girl, you didn't say enough. I was like, well, girl, go, keep going. We can just sit here and, and I'm good. And I know y'all good. You ain't turned it off yet. So we got to be doing OK. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> um, I think there's so much beauty in everything that you broke down, especially when you talk about comparison. Comparison, when you said that it's OK if it's only for one person, because this is for who it matters to. And if it's something that you're passionate about and you want to pursue to do all you can while you can to do what you desire, but to have appreciation. Appreciation, I tell everyone, leads to affirmation. Because if you can have a true appreciation, you're able to really create what you've affirmed because you're going to be able to inevitably put out everything that you put in. And it's going to come back to you. It's going to flow. So you want to make sure you're doing it right. You want to make sure that you're loving on yourself. You want to make sure you're not comparing yourself to other people um, and to do all you can while you can. I think that's an amazing way to put it. Time is promised to no man. And if if this were it, if this were it for you today, could you truly say that you did everything to satisfy yourself that you were able to do in this moment in time? You may not be a billionaire. Trust me, instead of clocking in, I would much rather be butt naked on somebody's yacht. But that's just not where I am right <laughs> now. So with that, I'm just taking it one stride at a time. I'm doing what I can from where I can. And you'll find that you enjoy life much more. Let the people know where they can find you. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun, y'all. I would keep her here another 25. Y'all don't understand. If I could make these segments two hours, but I'm not Joe Budden. I don't have that capacity yet. So I'm just going (laughs) to slow roll y'all to it. (laughs) But let the people know where they can find you. So you can find me on Instagram at Hey Miss Clark. And it's Miss M-I-S-S Clark C-L-A-R-K. That's everywhere. I'm not on Twitter. Um, I have a couple of vlogs on the YouTube. You can type in Hey Miss Clark, Clark there as well, and Facebook, Hey Miss Clark. Um, I mostly be on Instagram, so hit me up there. I would love to have you. That's where there. that's where we met. Yeah, Instagram yes. is a great space. If you're not on the gram, you should be. And in addition to following Hey Miss Clark on the gram, you should follow at the Expect Effect Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. My personal pages are going to be at It's Just Nikia on Instagram and Facebook. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been another week of expecting better doing better and believing better. I'm your host. It's just Nikia. Remember life is hard, but self-care, self-care doesn't have to be.